Okay, so when I came back then from New Zealand, we said we'd buy a, a baler and we bought a welder 235. And um, I suppose the year before I went, we were after buying a Massey, the 6290. So that was seven years ago um, this week. And we were, uh, when we bought that, it had no loader fitted, but we got a, a new loader fitted to it at the time. Um, Ross Moore collected it from where we bought it. And they fitted the loader and they dropped it down to us. So that was seven years ago today. I remember there was good tires in it. There was definitely 60 or 70% grip left in them. But they were, um, they were all cracked. Which I don't know how they were cracked with such an amount of grip on them because they weren't old tires. But we were constantly getting punctures. And I was mulching rushes in a place one day. And, um, it was quite a, it's quite a wet area, everywhere around there would be fairly wet in this particular field anyway, it was steep and wet, so I was down near the bottom of it and I got stuck and I got out anyway and I said I better ring for help. So once I got out of the tractor, I just heard the air hissing out of the tire. So I was stuck and I was uh, had a puncher. So we got her out and we weren't far from tire depot and we said right she's going for four new tires anyway because uh, that could have ended in a disaster if he hadn't been able to come on we'll say soon enough to um, to be able to pull me out before the tire went flat so that was her we put the four new tires in her the following or sorry that time and for the following year she had four new tires we had her we had the um, 6900 and we had the 3350 with our couple of years before that as well we changed the Keverland wrapper we bought a new wrapper which was a Tanko again which uh, is surprising with the, how we got on with the, the first Tanko but this one was a vast improvement a lovely wrapper <coughs> it had um, it had servo joystick control, so when you basically once you'd one revolution done, if you let go of the joystick, she'd finish the um, she'd finish the wrapping herself, and you'd just throw the bale off. So it was a very fast machine to use. At the time, we could have bought a McHale with the electric control box, but um, I always thought that you'd be faster with the joystick control than you would be with the electric box. It just you know you could. I suppose do two functions into one sort of you could keep her wrapping and, and be lifting lifting a new bale onto it at the same time. So we were very happy with her. Um the time we no we had the 3350 then. Yes we traded her in for a vacuum tank uh, because that year we, I'm I'm fast forwarding a few years now um we had Right, sorry, I'm after mixing up the whole lot now. Okay, so we had the tanko and we had the we had the tanko wrapper and we had the, um, the welder baler. We worked away like that for a few years, and we said we could kind of really do with another tractor. So that was when we bought the TM, and we bought that in the Northern Ireland, um, and we worked. She worked on the baler. It was late in the year when we got her, it was maybe August or September, so she finished off that year on the baler. The following year then, um, again you're kind of shoving there towards the end of that season, um, we said we'd buy a twin dispenser wrapper, might speed things up a bit. So, because we were kind of still wrapping for two balers and um, just would have made more sense. We were, also, we were actually wrapping for three balers because we were wrapping for another guy with his own baler. So we had the two wrappers, but um, I suppose the Tanko kind of didn't do much the end of that year. It was a park garden where we were using the twin dispenser one. Um, that was a Keverland as well. We put a hitch on the 235 and we pulled the baler behind it. And uh, that definitely is a system that I couldn't, uh, there was downfalls to it, but I definitely wouldn't knock it. It worked very well on flat ground, you had good all output out of it. Um, you want your head screwed on while you were using it, but uh, I definitely wouldn't say no to one. 
if you had to run a second outfit maybe like someone bailing a lot of straw now that had a fusion and kind of needed another baler or bailing a lot of hay I definitely wouldn't knock it as a, as a second outfit uh, the day you'd be under pressure it would probably work away fine so one of its biggest downfalls was hills um, very hard to pick a bale right on a hill or, or leave the bale out of the bale or there was kind of a bit of room for it to go wrong in between the two and all that wasn't too bad because you get you had you get the knack for that but the biggest problem was if you had a bale up in the wrapper and no bale in the bale or you would no way it down on the draw bar your tractor so you were you were tending to spin going uphill um, so we kind of finished out that year with that uh, we kind of intended on going at it the next year really but we came we came across the fusion one and um, we bought the fusion one that time and the TM bailed away with that for two years and that's when la this year we decided that the fusion one was kind of getting up there to the bail count um, look it was and I'm sure everyone at high work has reached the same problem at some stage you either spend the ball of money on a machine or you spend money and go away and buy something new and it's uh, for a lot of people this won't make sense but for anyone that's been in the position it's cheaper buy something brand new than it is buy something a couple of years old so you get better finance deals and you know it just works out better really so we decided we'd go for the new one this year and that was our first new baler and it would be about our fourth new machine altogether I would say um, I'm gonna have to rewind a bit now because I'm after skipping an awful lot there but basically we traded in that um, yellow tanko wrapper the one we bought new for the high spec vacuum tank uh, because we were starting to spread a bit more slowly so we needed the second tank um, last year we have the tank with the trail and shoe on it and I suppose you could say we don't need three vacuum tanks but um, I think a, a purpose-built machine is an awful lot better than you know there's a lot of um, I, I suppose I'm not a fan of these mastic dribble bars hanging on the back door of the tanker uh, number one you're bringing it around with you an awful lot of the time when you don't need it and uh, number two it's just not um, purpose built like the tank is purpose built it has inbuilt stone traps inside in the tank there's a stone trap on the macerator so you've kind of no fear of farting objects really uh, it's mounted onto the vacuum tank it's just fully bolted on and um, the axle is back a bit further in your tank so you have weight down in your drawbar so I suppose that tank spreads very little splash blades slurry it's just kind of there for when we did low emissions thing and um, I'd assume that's going to be getting more and more popular on our first year with it well I'm actually happy enough with how much we spread with it given that it's not a legality yet for a lot of people there's been a good interest in it good uptake in it and um, I'd say definitely the future of slurry spreading is going in that direction it's going to be either dribble bars or trailing shoes or uh, shallow disc injection which is something I would like to look into at some point so that's kind of the slurry side of it covered really um, when we traded the 3350 then that was the next machine to go uh, there was a couple of add-ons in, in the middle I suppose but not very serious things um, we traded the 3350 in for the CBX 1170 and at that time we also bought a rear um, John Deere mower when we bought the um, 1170 a side mounted John Deere mower with full intentions of um, going front and back mowers so we that winter then after buying the 1170 we picked up a crown front mower and uh, we said we'd have scoped in that we'd be able to either run them on the TM or run them on the CVX which most of the intention would uh, be on the TM so that spring our neighbour was um, he was going more on a bit of silage 
it was very early in the year it was I'd say that's probably two or three years ago now there was some very very early silage cut um, March there was, a, there was a, a nice bit of silage cut in March that year and we um, I mowed a bit for him I just wanted to try out how the TM had worked out and she worked out perfect but in the meantime I saw these class butterflies advertised and as anybody knows who to be browsing through Dundee um, looking on Dundee is a bad job because you're going to find something you like so I traded the trail class for the butterflies and that's how we started with them but then we had another problem because the CBX was the only oak big enough to drive them and the CBX is going to be bailing so with no tractor for the triples so on that note I'm going to finish this one and I'm going to start up the next one but I'm going to rewind a small bit because there's something I didn't fill in on